Hey, good afternoon. Today, I'm gonna to be working on the Sierra, and I'm going to be changing the bird drums and the shoes on the rear. This has discs on the front and drums on the back. And also, I'm gonna check the wheel cylinders and see if they're leaking, they need to be replaced. We'll know more when we crack it open and see what's going on in there. I better get busy. Usually when you jack a truck up, it's a good idea to put the emergency brake on, but not when you're changing the drums because the emergency brake is hooked to the drums and won't be able to remove it with the brake on. So make sure your emergency brake is disengaged. And just get it high enough to lift the wheels off the ground. So now we'll take the wheel off. So, this drum has what I hoped it would. Stick a bolt in there, tighten it, and it should push this off of here. Make it easier to remove. So, let me go find a bolt that fits in there, and we'll take care of it. So, this one is a 9 16 Well, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. That's what the head is. It has three. I know there's a way of reading, telling what these are by the, it has three lines on it. So if you know what that is, that's what fits in this one. Right. 
right. That looks like it's working really well. Felt like it was coming off, but I just wanna use both sides equally. You know, I probably should be wearing gloves. I'll be right back. Ah. Yep, there's some brake dust in here. There's a lot of brake dust, but there's no um, brake fluid leaking out of here. So I think this wheel, so this wheel cylinder is good. I'm not gonna replace it because that will make uh, me have to uh, bleed the brakes as well. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, they didn't have the part in the store. I had to order it. And since these look fine, I'm just gonna leave them, leave them alone. And uh, yes, look at this, look at this, this is just, there's <laughs> some squealing going on, and now I can see exactly why. <clears throat> Look at how thin that is. That's like no pad. These pads, especially, I mean, you can see this one has a little bit of thickness, but whoo, that's thin. And then this one, that's just metal. That's just the backing of that pad. There ain't nothing on there. There's a good view of it, how thin it is. So yeah, we're gonna get those, we're gonna replace those today. On this drum. Has some ridges on it. I'll probably go ahead and replace that too. But these shoes are really what need to be replaced. Now that I know what I need, I'm gonna go to the store and pick up the parts. But I know a lot of times they um, have two different sizes for the same truck, um, like nine and a half or 10 and a half or something like that is what they ask. So to avoid any um, complications to get the wrong one, I know I could be using a measuring tape, but But I'm Betty and this is how I do it. So. This side is this long. Is that long. So I can use that tape when I'm at the store. I have it right here on my pants. And um, we'll make sure we get the right size break um, shoes. Yep, these look like the right ones. All right, I'm back with the goods. And now let's match them up. Let's 
spray cleaner. Got the hardware kit. So then, the other set there didn't have the, um, there was two calling for at the, for this year making model. There was two sets of uh, brake shoes showing up on the screen. Um, one had this little, uh, this here, and the other one didn't. I was able to tell the difference because there's a square here. The main thing was the pictures I took and I brought with me and I opened up both boxes and matched them up and found the ones that looked close, the closest, closely, the most closely resembled. I found the brake shoes that most closely resembled the ones in the picture. So take pictures or draw it out before you take everything apart to help you put it back together and to know which ones to get when you get to the store because sometimes there could be multiple parts that go to the same vehicle so, these are for the other side when you buy a set of shoes it comes with four that's enough for the left and enough for the right Look good to me. So that looks like it was break jump 8118. 80118 for the last few shop at AutoZone. If you shop other places, they can cross reference it. And then the the brake shoes were part number 855. And the hardware kit, H7943. So first thing, before I start taking any of this apart, I'm gonna clean it up really good. Get any brake dust off, it's not good for to breathe it. And once, when you start taking this off, dust is gonna fly everywhere. So let me get a bucket for it to drain in and um, be right back. That's what I'm talking about.
that might be difficult to spread out. This one's for the other side. Before I start taking anything apart, I'm going to get a real good look at this to uh, make sure I know where everything goes. Even though I took pictures, I like to be cognizant of what's going on. Get some pliers and um, probably a screwdriver or something to pry with. And we'll get these taken apart. I'm just, just getting an idea so when I put it back together, I know exactly how to put it back. Okay, so that goes right in there, and that goes under there. Okay. Do it a couple times. Do it a couple times so I could see exactly where it goes. Now set this aside. Clipped it right into the new one.
So now we need to remove the emergency brake cable that runs from over here and then it goes here and it's this little thing here. So let's see if I can get it so you can see. So what I'm going to do is push this down. Let's see, here, let me show you. So first, once I remove this, I pull this down like this and then turn it around. And now I got to push this down to release the cable. <laughs> Just don't want to stab my hand with a screwdriver. There we go. See, so we had to go hook underneath. And now we can remove this. And now, I'm going to put the other one in. Right now, exactly the same. So I don't mess anything up. Now what I'm going to use to valve spring compressor, I'm going to put it on here on the spring to get the tension down so I can slide the cable into the little hook that it belongs in. All right, now I have a lot more room for this cable to slide. Where it needs to go. There we go. Mm. All right. And that is now where it's supposed to be. So we can release the tools here. Just need it to snap behind. Thank you. 
see how they are in place down here on the bottom. And now we just need to put this in here and the same on the other side, put that in there. And we also need to put the adjuster on. So we will put the spring on. There we go. a bear. Now I'm going to put the adjuster in. Let me tighten it to make it smaller so it will fit in the area. And then we'll loosen it once we get it in there. And now we'll put the adjuster on. Spring. I'm 
Let's see how this works. Make sure everything is in place. I'm gonna go in there and press on the brake and see what happens. and put the brake drum on. I'm gonna spray it. I'm gonna spray it with a little brake cleaner. Just because it's got any kind of um, rust preventative on it. that dry. And we've got a test. Um, um, we got to adjust the way the brakes fit um, in the drum. So I'm going to put the drum on then I'll turn it and we'll turn the little adjuster screw until the pads, until it feels right.
does some work. But got it done. I'm going to put the wheel on and uh, see how they feel. So, one last thing we need to do before we take it for a test drive is make sure the lug nuts are all good and tight. I'm uh, cleaning my mess and we'll take it for a drive.
sometimes people can make things look easy. I'm just here to make them look real. I show you that some things may be hard, but they're not impossible. And just remember, if I can do it, so can you. Like, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification bell if you want to know when the next videos are up. Um, always working on them. So, thanks for watching, and take care.